welcome to the League of Women Voters Voter Education Forum on Question J. This is segment two of a three-segment panel. Um, because we are restarting on segment two, I am going to ask our panelists if they would like to do one-minute opening statements so that we can have a cohesive transition. The person who started the last question was Mr. Swartz. So Ms. Brave Boy, would you like to open with an, a new opening statement, not to exceed, for my timekeepers, one minute? Sure. And please pull the mic. Thank you. Thank you again, and I'd like to thank again the League of Women Voters for this important uh, conversation that we're having with the community. Um, I am uh, State Delegate Aisha Brave Boy, and I am in opposition to uh, Question J. My main opposition is that I trust and respect the voters of Prince George's County, and um, I have been impressed um, by their fortitude, and when they just determined that they wanted to have uh, term limits, they went out there, they got the signatures, they put it on the ballots, and they won. And I believe that if we um, really care about our democracy, we should support what the citizens have, have told us. And we have to, everybody has to work within the limitations placed by their bosses, right? The citizens of Prince George's County are our bosses. And if the citizens say you get eight years, you get eight years. If they want to give you 12 years or 16 years or 20 years, guess what? Our charter gives them the ability to do so. They have not taken it up, and I don't think we should either. Commission met uh, with regard to charter review from January through March. Uh, we met weekly. All of those meetings were public. One, uh, we had two uh, specific public hearing uh, meetings, one in the northern end of the county in College Park and one in the southern end in uh, Fort Washington uh, for public meetings, public testimony and comment. They were not well attended, be honest about that. Uh, but I will say this about the recommendation. The recommendation is to put this ballot question before the voters, Again, this is democracy. This is our system. It's how it's set up. The voters have the choice to say whether or not they want uh, the council and the exec to be able to serve three terms. Uh, I think about all of the fantastic, wonderful, dedicated elected officials, former elected officials, who cannot serve anymore simply because we have term limits. Question J and the effort to repeal term limits is an insider job. Okay, it's, it's done by the inside. Incumbent politicians who want to hold on to office and their lobbyists and friends. And we ought to reject that. And the commission, they not only want to repeal term limits, but they also have that tax rate cap in their, in their, in their uh, focus, and it's in their report. Uh, it's an inside job. Term limits are all over the country. Five jurisdictions in, count, in, in, in the state of Maryland the governor of Maryland, the president of the United States, all over the country. It's a check on power, and we have to have checks and balances in the system. And as I said before, money is, is, is so entrenched in the campaigns in our county. Uh, the incumbent war chests, the slates, the money, uh, and the longer uh, incumbent politicians stay in office, the more they're in, they are captive to the special interest and the money interest, and the less and the more your voice gets drowned out. We need checks in the system, and we've got to keep this check, term limits, in the system. Len Lucci, I'm a lifelong resident of Prince George's County, and I love this county, and I love living here, and I trust the, and respect the voters of Prince George's County just like Delegate Bravoy does, and because I do, I don't want to tie their hands. Because things are happening in Prince George's County that are great and that I'm very proud of. Uh, the lowest homicide reduction uh, since 1986. A new hospital's coming to Prince George's County run by University of Maryland Medical Systems. We turned the corner on education. I am just very happy and it's an exciting time. And when you have things going well, you want to keep your winning team when they're putting points in the scoreboard. You don't want to change the team when you're doing well. And if they aren't doing well, then you have the voters to have the opportunity to throw them out. That's what democracy is all about. 
I, I love this county. I want to see the progress continue in this county. I don't want us to have to go compete with Fairfax and Montgomery and D.C. and have one arm tied behind our back because we don't have the institutional experience and knowledge in our public officials that they ha are able to have. Montgomery is not going to have two county executives in a row with uh, 12 years of experience. And that's very important because it takes a while to get oriented. So please support question J. I think I could uh, best sum up our position in opposition to question J as, you know, going against two fundamental arguments put forward for why it's so important to do away with term limits. The first is that uh, it's, it's democracy, if we, it, and it violates democracy somehow if we have term limits, that it's throwing the good out with the bad. Well, there are 800 thousand people in Prince George's County. I will wager you that every few years we could find a few dozen good people who can do good things for this county. The idea, the idea that citizens are somehow incapable of running their own government and that they will be hornswoggled by permanent staff and lobbyists if they are elected and we have new faces in office, that's what's really contrary to democracy. Ms. Levi, we're going to give you the, qu the first question on um, section, section two of this panel. All right, and this is a double question, so let's allow one and a half minutes for this question, please, because it's complex. What are the benefits of question J, if you believe there are any, and what are the disadvantages of question J, if you believe there are any? I really don't believe there are any benefits uh, to question J. As I said, 30,000 signatures were collected to place uh, the term limits question on the ballot in 1992, and that's why we have term limits. Um, and really, because of the campaign finance system, the way it works, uh, the incumbent war chest, uh, the slate system. We have more slates in Prince George's County than um, anywhere else in the state. We have the vast majority of them. And when I say slates, those are the pieces of paper you get in the mail, the quote unquote official Democratic ballot. They are the choices of the party leaders. And they really, really uh, are persuasive for voters here. Um, but anyway, the influence of money, of slaves, and all of these outside influences, really term limits are really uh, a check on, on the system. Um, so I think we'd be giving up a, an important check and balance in the system that allows new, as, as one of the panelists said, new ideas, new talent, uh, people who have not been commandeered uh, by the special interest and the money, uh, to come into office and offer fresh perspectives and for citizen activists to percolate up and also serve in office. So um, I don't think there are benefits, only downsides. I don't think there's any <laughs> uh, downsides. I think there's only advantages. Number one, you retain valuable experience. Number two, you respect democracy. You don't arbitrarily type people's ha voters' hands for who they can uh, choose. Uh, number three, Prince George's County, you allow it to compete in a vigorous uh, regional marketplace where we're up against some of the richest, uh, wealthiest counties in the country, and we need that experience to do that. Uh, number four, you get to continue progress. When you have a good team that's reducing crime, that's expanding economic development, that's reforming the schools, that's promoting and helping out our communities, you want to keep that team in the field. You don't want to pull them off. And five, you still allow for fresh perspectives. People can still take on the uh, incumbents and then they could win. Um, and when they take on the slates, they could win. That's what both uh, Brave Boy and Delegate uh, Levi did uh, quite successfully. And while they were in Annapolis, they never proposed uh, term limits for state legislators. So I think it's a good thing, and you still have that, that check and balance to let people come in and run. And you still have the vigorous ethics uh, and watchdogs to make sure that if someone does violate the public trust, uh, that they're out. So. That uh, is um, my statement. Those are the advantages. I urge you to vote for question J. I'm very proud of this county. We think great things are happening. Uh, let's keep them going. Mr. Swartz? So uh, I would concede that experience as a general proposition is 
something worth, uh, worth considering. Experience is definitely helpful in many situations. But you have to weigh benefits versus drawbacks. And the drawbacks in this situation are vastly, vastly outweigh the benefits. So for whatever you know, experience delta there may be between somebody who's been in office and somebody who hasn't, there are hundreds of other people in county government who are there to advise them. There are hundreds of other people in their party. There are hundreds of other people that they turn to that they can draw that experience from. This is not something where somebody's just coming in fresh off the street with no relationships and then all of a the sudden they're expected to run things. And even if they were, if they got voted in, they got voted in. Now, I'd like to, I'd like to quibble with this idea that, that somehow any restriction on who can run is arbitrary. Arbitrary, the definition of the word, means that there's no reasoning behind it. That it's a, it's a choice and you've made it like it's a coin toss or you do it just because you want to. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is preserving the structural integrity of the democratic process. Okay, so what we're doing is allowing people to serve for a reasonable amount of time. We are looking at the actual time that it, the actual uh, drawbacks that, that accrue when we have an incumbent sitting in office and the bias that accrues to them in the voting process. And we're also looking at the benefits of being able to not only get fresh ideas in there, but then also expect that responsibility from the rest of the electorate to step up and run for something and make it easier for them to do that. You know, Mr. Lucci pointed out that both Delegate uh, Levi, or former Delegate Levi and myself, served in the state legislature for which there are no term limits. But both of us are here today as individuals who, who decided that after a term, in her case, and after two terms in my case, it was time to move on. And guess what? I'm excited about the new leadership that's serving my district, just like I'm sure that Delegate Levi was excited about the new leadership that's serving her district. You know, one of the things that incumbents can do is to help create a, a bench in their community of citizens and people who want to serve. You know, I don't want to be a career politician. I want to be someone who creates social change. And whether I am in elected office doing that, or I'm out in the community working hard with the citizens of Prince George's County and the state of Maryland doing that, it really doesn't matter. I'm still serving. The question I really just have is, you know, why would we intervene where the citizens of our county made a decision? They made the decision. It wasn't arbitrary because guess what? It's in the charter. Our charter gives our citizens the right to determine how long they want elected officials to serve. If there was an overwhelming desire to keep those who are currently in office in power, then the citizens would have gathered the requisite signatures and put the question on the ballot. That's not what happened in this case. So again, I ask, whose democracy are we serving? Is it the people who elected us? Or is it some other interest that, 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 that wants to keep the current structure and the current individuals in place? This question is, is question J a Democratic or Republican issue? It is alleged that one party is placing question J as a vote yes on the card being taken into the voting booth. Um, what is your view? How did this happen and why? Parties are allowed to take positions on ballot issues and the Democratic Party has, and I don't know what position the Republican Party uh, has taken. Um, but the voters of Prince George's County created the charter some 40 years ago, and then the charter that they adopted, it had two ways of putting ballot measures on the ballot. One is by a petition, uh, two is by counting through the county council. Both were adopted by the citizens, and both were adopted 40 years ago. Um, 20 years ago, term limits were adopted. I'm sorry, 20 years ago? Yeah, 20 years ago, term limits were adopted. Um, I spent uh, eight years serving in the administration of, of Wayne Curry, uh, a, great, a great leader of Prince George's County. Uh, how I wish that he could have had a, a third term. He had a vision, he had a plan, and he had to arbitrarily stop after uh, eight years. Uh, sure, there are people who are in county government who have been there for many years who have experience, but you need 
an elected person to be a check and keep the bureaucracy moving. So I, I support question J. Thank you. Mr. Swartz? Uh, so the uh, Prince George's County Republican Central Committee has taken a position against uh, question J. Um, however, I don't think this is an inherently democratic or republican issue. What I see this as is, is an issue of integrity in a voting system. And I apply that same standard of term limits. I don't care if it's somebody I like or if it's somebody I don't like, okay? That term limit is important. So if I were to suddenly get elected for office tomorrow, I would want that term limit for me. Because everybody, I don't care who you are, has some natural inclination toward corruption. It's just a fact of life. And it's really easy to get in power and become complacent and say, you know what, I really like being able to call the shots around here. Term limits help to keep the time people sit in a particular office down. You can have a reasonable amount of experience, but still not become such an entrenched power that you begin to corrupt the system. I attended the Democratic Central Committee meeting when uh, the, there was a vote uh, by the Central Committee to support um, term limits. And I can tell you that the week prior to that, the Democratic Central Committee was resistant to support term limits. But um, while I wasn't present during certain meetings that I've been told took place, um, with those who are in power here in the county. The Democratic Central Committee um, essentially the following week decided, okay, well, we, are, we must now take a position and the position is going to be to support Question J. You know, I think that that's at the heart of why this is a bad idea because of the process that this, uh, this question went through. First of all, it was introduced very late in the session, very little time for citizen input. Uh, then you have a Democratic Central Committee who wants to do the right thing, I believe, one week, and then felt forced to do something different the following week. That's not democracy. That's bullying, and it's wrong. There are great people serving in office, but it was strong-arm tactics. They changed the chair of the Democratic Central Committee through strong-arm tactics in anticipation of this question. The Democratic, like I said, bef this Incumbent politicians have put this question before the voters two other times, in 2000 and 2004, and the Democratic Central Committee didn't take a position, but this time they recommended for it. And it is, it, it, it just is, strong arm tag. That's what happens when you have entrenched power and machines and people can't really, aren't free to step out of line without facing retribution. That's what happens. I mean, it, it just really does. Um, all since the primary, this is what, you know, we get the pay raise, we get this question on term limit to extend the term limits, and we find out that the county has a uh, $60 million deficit, all since the primary. And it's just a lot. It's a lot all at one time. Um, I think we should reject question J. There is concern that when elected officials are only allowed two terms, nobody with decision-making power has institutional memory of decisions and circumstances that came before their term. Some believe that this can lead to county staff who do have this background having far more influence and power than the officials who are elected by the people. What are your thoughts on this concept? And the first person to answer this is Mr. Swartz. So I would actually, uh, I would come back at this question with another question. My question to you is what do you expect of your leaders? If you are putting somebody in power, if you are voting for somebody, do you expect that they need to have everything handed to them on a decision? Do you expect that they need to have training wheels for the first few years just to pick things up? Or do you expect that these are people who are able to very quickly process large amounts of subject matter, who are very quickly able to unravel and make the delicate strands of decision-making authority and make relationships? Or most importantly, do you expect your leaders to make decisions and actually lead? Because when I go to vote for somebody, that's what I expect of them. And there is no reason for us to believe that somebody is incapable of 
researching institutional knowledge. We have this great thing called the internet. We have, we have papers of record. We have, oh, I'm sorry, my time's up. You know, the most powerful elected official in the world, the President of the United States, has term limits. So I would argue that if this issue of whether or not someone can come in and, and uh, hit, the, hit the ground running and understand what their responsibility is and serve the people of this country well, um, then ask President Barack Obama if he was able to do it. Ask, you know, Ronald Reagan if he was able to do it. Ask Bill Clinton if he was able to do it. And hopefully we'll be asking someone who may be of a di different gender that in a few years. But um, my, my point is that when you start a job, just like if you get uh, hired, um, you don't necessarily know everything about that job when you start. But guess what? You're expected to pick up the ball and roll with it and do a good job. And we've seen people who've done that. You do that in, in your life. And we expect the elected officials to do that in their lives. Thank you. Now, Mr. Lucci. I'm sorry, Ms. Levi. Oh. Thank you. I'm sorry. You know, our government is designed to be a continuum. When I came, when both Aisha and I came into office, I mean, any issue that comes up, you get lots of material. You have briefings. You have a public hearing process. You talk to your constituents. You read your letters. You listen to calls. Um, it, it, it's not, it, it is a lot of information to digest, but it's not that hard. Many of our lawmakers who serve are studied leaders. They study the material they get, and they're able to make a decision. And, you know, as Delegate Brave Voy mentioned, there's so many elected officials who have term limits who are able to do the job ably. And we have educated people who can read, who can talk to people, who can talk to their constituents. They're able to do the work that they need to do in the time allotted. Uh, Delegate Brayboy made a point before that I think maybe it was missed, and, and that was that she said she and Delegate Levi uh, voluntarily imposed term limits on themselves, and they decided it was time to uh, leave the House of Delegates and, and to find new challenges. I think that proves that, that we don't need it, that we have a choice, people make a choice, and elected officials make their own choices. But, but here's why the question was about uh, the staff of Prince George's County and, and, the, and the bureaucracy and the need for public officials to be in for a longer period of time. Uh, 22 counties in the state have their own parks and recreation department. Prince George's County does not. 21 counties have their own planning department. Prince George's County does not. They're both under an unelected Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. 21 can decide their own water and sewer future, a key to economic development. Uh, Prince George's County does not. It has the Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission. These are all entrenched bureaucracies. We need elected officials with experience to make sure the public will holds these agencies accountable. And that's a tough thing to do. Delegate Brave Boy, would you like to do a closing statement? Yes. Again, thank you all for being here. This is um, an amazing show of democracy, and I'm so proud to be a Prince Georgian. I've lived in Prince George's County most of my life. Uh, I am a product of the Prince George's County public school system, and I have been proud to have served in the Maryland House of Delegates, um, my community. Um, and it's important to me as an elected official that I never forget where I came from, that I never forget those who um, have helped me to achieve um, the greatness that I have achieved as a human being um, and as a, a member of our House of delegates, and that is you, the citizens. I respect you. I respect your vote. I have been one of the biggest defenders of democracy and voting rights in Annapolis. I am so proud to have come from a county that takes this issue so seriously that the citizens led an effort to determine how they wanted their democracy run, and I commit to you that I will continue to help you to preserve it. Thank you. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this important forum. Um, it, qu question J, we ought to reject and oppose question J. 
It is an effort to repeal term limits. We've rejected those efforts uh, at least twice in the past. Term limits are not rare. They're all over the state, all over the country. Um, and they're in a, term limits are an important check given the overwhelming influence of money in our campaign system. And that money, that influence of money is only growing. <laughs> And so citizen activists, new ideas, young people, new people coming into the system will face an awesome challenge trying to defeat entrenched, machine-backed, um, you know, a slate-driven process. So we really have to think, think twice about that and uh, protect the system that citizens put in place and reject question J. Thanks to the League of Women Voters for putting on this forum this morning. Thank you to the audience for coming on an early Saturday morning to listen to us. Thank you to my fellow panelists, those who are here, those who are not here, although I have great respect for all of you. Um, I'm here because I love Prince George's County. I've lived here almost all of my life. And I'm so proud of the progress we've had in the past four years in reducing crime and reforming our schools and expanding economic development and, and building our communities. I want to continue that progress. And I don't want the voters of Prince George's County, including myself and my wife and my son and my daughter who all vote, uh, to be, uh, have our arms tied behind our back and have our choices restricted on who we could vote for. I voted for plenty of incumbents during my years of a voter. I voted for plenty of challengers, many challengers of one, including Delegate Brayboy and Delegate Levi. Um, but let's not tie our hands. Let's go forward and let's uh, have the voters affirm the democracy and affirm the progress that we've made in this county. And we want to have a, we have a great team that's kept things going. We want to keep a good thing going. Mr. Swartz, you get the last word. I always love the last word. So um, I would say first and foremost, Vote on the issue, vote on the issue, vote on the issue. Go out, get your friends to vote, and the most important thing in this election, even though I oppose the question, is to make sure you get people out and vote and make their voices heard. Voter and political apathy are bad enough, okay? If we have term limits repealed, it just makes an institutional problem even worse. There are plenty of people that we ought to be pulling in to run for office, to be part of that political process, and I would encourage you to encourage them or even take the opportunity yourself to put your hat in the ring and, and try to get more faces out there. That's what representative democracy in a republic is about. You know, it's been described as arbitrary. It's not arbitrary. It's a reasonable restriction based on reasonable concerns. And finally, I would just say that the idea of keeping good things going and, and us not being able to do that with new faces, that to me is it's a, it's fallacious because I have faith in the people of Prince George's County to pick leaders that can continue progress. The board of directors of the Prince George's County League of Women Voters as well as our members to just come down front and if you can pan them because these are the people who made it happen. Let's give them a hand. Come on Dorothy, Nancy, Norma. Norma, come on out. Nancy, Nancy is our mentor. Come on up. Somebody get a picture, please. I won't name everybody because I may mix up a couple of names, but this is the Prince George's County League of Women Voters, and we are so happy that you are here today.